it is time to see how we can use some I.O. boxes to enter some information manually. First we create an I.O. box and an inspector. Select the I.O. box and use the inspector to make it two rows and columns. Also turn on grid and slice count. When we scale up the I.O. box, we will only see one value, but we told VVV that we want to see four values. Well, that's because it still has the slice count mode set to input, and since it only receives one slice, it shows only one slice. We can change that by setting the slice count mode to calls rows pages. And now we see four values. The default value of the I.O. box is zero, and that's why we see four zeros. We have now set up the I.O. box so we can enter some values in one of the four slices. You can only manually enter some values if there is nothing connected to the input pin. Now, if we hover above any of these slices, we can right click and drag, up or down, up or down. To do this, we do not even have the node selected for this. So if I click anywhere on the patch, the inspector shows us no information and that means there is no node selected. But I still can change the values. If I want to be more precise, or I need a value, let's say above 10, I just double left click and then I can type in a value. When I want to confirm my value, I can either click outside the node, or I can hit the enter key. Enter, or click. VVV either supports commas or dots if you want to enter fractions. So I can type in 11.25 or I can type in 12,40 and they are both accepted. The I.O. box doesn't use any symbols to show you you're working with large values. So if I enter 1 million, it says 1,000,000 and not 10 billion. An easy way to give all the slices similar values is changing the I input pin. I can either right click and type in a value, or I can right click and drag up or down. Let's make the four slices different again. Make sure the I.O. box is selected in Heron Spectre. Now if I change the rows to let's say 4, VVV will show me 2 times 4 equals 8, so 8 slices, and as you might notice, it repeats the first 4 to fill the other 4. Now comes a tricky part, and a warning. If I make this I.O. box to one column and one row, then change it back to 2 by 2, you will see that only the first slice is repeated 4 times. This is because when you went from 1 to 4 slices, there was only one slice in the I.O. box for VVV to copy. Please remember this before you end up in losing all your precious manually typed values. You can also lose all your values if you connect anything that gives out values to the input pin of this I.O. box. Ok, let's move this aside and now it's time for some text. So we make an I.O. box string, double right click and select string. I'm going to make a list, make sure the I.O. box is selected and change the rows to 4. Also turn on the show slice index and the show grid buttons and turn the slice count mode to calls rows pages. Make it a bit bigger. Since I cannot drag up or down to change the text, I mean what would you expect if that was possible? I can only enter strings by typing them. So double left click and type some text. When we work with strings we cannot use the enter to confirm. So I just click outside the node. If I was typing a string and I hit the enter key, I will just generate a new line inside this slice. So this means that one slice in a spread of strings can be very very long. When I make the I.O. box string smaller, you can see these weird characters. But don't worry about it, the string will be exactly the same as you entered it. You can also enter numbers here, but these are just handled as strings. 
I will explain how to convert strings to values in a later tutorial. For an IO box color, everything works the same. Move this here. So let's make an IO box color. Double right click, select color, select it, go to where inspector, make the columns to, the rows through, set the slice count mode to calls rows pages, turn on the slice index and show the grid and make it a bit bigger. The IO box color deserves its own tutorial. I will make one later, so for now we can only change the values by right clicking and dragging. If I right click on a slice and drag up or down, I change the value or the darkness of the color. If I right click and move to the left or to the right, you see I can change the UE of the color or the color itself. Now, if I drag up or down, but holding my control key on the keyboard, I can change the saturation of the color, or the amount of white. And if I use these methods on the input pin, I can change all four colors at the same time. Control key. And we got this dirty gray look. If I save this patch and reopen it, VVV should have remembered everything we entered. Ok, we now know how to set up an IO box, enter some values by hand. So now it's time to move to the next subject, and that is the subject of help files.